really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, hello there. This dress I'm wearing as I open this show today is a product of hard work of one woman who had a vision, a vision to see women become better at everything that they do by identifying some women who she felt represent the kind of dreams that women should have, apart from herself, of course. But she's a top designer in, in Nigeria and is recognized all over the world. How far can her intellectual property go if not protected? She's one of those that has fought the battle in her own ways, but why is she my guest on the show today? I simply want to present somebody who has been able to extend herself beyond the brand and make the brand extend without it being all about herself. A very difficult thing to do in Nigeria, if you ask me. I'll be back in a short while with my guest today who has become a sister and a friend. Doesn't like the media, but for us, she'll give an exception. We'll be right back on Seriously Speaking. My name is Ade Suwa Onyenokwe. Welcome back. I begin by saying thank you to Folake for being on the show. Do you know why I say thank you? No. Well, her name is, I gave it away, Folake Koka. I would never forget, but people remember as Tiffany Amba. Yes. But somehow you've managed to put Folake Koka and Tiffany Amba in two different boxes. <laughs> How did you do that? I didn't say why I said thank you, but I'll say it later. Okay, I think I need to say something first. You said that I don't like the media. That makes me sound like the American president. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing, no, I do, it's not that I don't like the media. I just um, never really want to say anything unless I have something important to say. And I need to be very comfortable with who I'm talking with. Mm -hmm. Just so that, you know, sometimes when you're in the public light, you're guarded all the time. I don't like being guarded. So if I want to talk, I want my guards completely down. Mm -hmm. So that way, mm -hmm. I can say, I can speak truly from the heart, as opposed to, you know, just telling you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, I called it just so, suddenly, I felt like I wanted you to be on this show because I see how well you have reinvented yourself. Not really, without really losing the Tiffany Amber purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about that later because I'm going to sit down on the panel and discuss that with you. But what, I, what I'm curious to know though, is how you feel about intellectual property. There's a lot of, I stand against counterfeiting and all of those things now. But fashion industry is one area that people don't realize there's actually a lot of that going on as well. Am I correct? Yes, it's going on in, um, it's, it's strange. Because I've always, I always used to believe that if nobody's copying what you're doing, you really, really need to look at what you're doing. Because that means nobody wants to be like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a sign of success when people copy you. But then our environment is so small, the business environment that is, um, that you can actually damage somebody's business by counterfeiting their product in this environment a lot faster than you would say anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the fashion industry, I'm gonna use it as an example. There are brands now that are set up to copy the few established designers there are in the industry and um, they do it very disrespectfully. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I, don't, I try not to get emotional about it because you know, there's some, in, there are few designers who in their lifetime come up with a product that stands the test of time. That, like this one, for example. This yeah. my dress is like four years old or three years old. That's a timeless piece, but I'm talking, like, you know, um, Diane von Fostenberg, she's one of my favorite people on earth. I think yeah. she's just amazing. Her wrap dress. Yes, and your wrap, uh, your wrap you know, I call it the lily wrap dress when I started, and then I've seen it. I mean, there were websites set up to duplicate this dress at selling it at what? Maybe a tenth of the price that we were selling it. But you is know, that bad? It was bad for business, but it was good for my ego. <laughs> because everywhere I turn, I see something that I created. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, at first I thought, oh no, I'm not gonna touch it again. But no, if you do that, you're giving it, you're, you're, you're letting go of something. I mean, that dress for me was probably the, the first time I experienced- It almost broke your back, I remember. Tension pain. 
because I stood in front of a mannequin for seven hours, draping and draping and draping. And then, <laughs> ta-da, at 2 a.m. in the morning, this dress was born. And I thought, oh, wow, this is, this is it. And um, for two years, luckily, nobody copied it. <laughs> so, I mean, I think by then... But they didn't understand it, I guess. No, they didn't. And we had sold maybe nearly two, three... 2,500 pieces by then. Mm -hmm. So we, it, it, it wasn't bad, but when you st start seeing it everywhere, it allows you to push yourself even mm -hmm. further mm -hmm. to come up with something. But you know, in a lifetime of a design, you might not come up with more than one mm -hmm. of those type of products because that dress changed the way women dress. It brought the realm about our, to the level of the funky. Yeah. Yeah. Away from the mummies, yeah. you know, <laughs> and the mummies who wanted to be funky would wear it. But however, having said that though, the question really is about how can you protect intellectual rights in an industry like yours? It's difficult because the fashion industry, it's um, still very much in its infancy. Here in Nigeria? Here in Nigeria. Even with all the accomplishments that people like you have made? It's, yes. Because how do you say, you, it needs to be an outright copy. And then, did you copyright this product when you created it? Can you copyright the product? If You're nobody, a lawyer. If nobody else in the world has done anything like that, I mean, really, if you can come up with a pair of trousers, how do you copyright a pair of trousers? <laughs> how? I mean, you can copyright your print. But you're doing that. You've been doing prints in recent times. Well, no. Actually, I've been doing prints for about 15 years now. Every season, Almost from the beginning. From the beginning. We always have our own prints. And there was this particular print, my dancer print, which I was on Instagram the other day, and I saw wait a minute, I didn't do that design. design. And then I saw it on somebody, other designers. Would I, do I say designers, other clothes maker? Mm -hmm. I've started copying, they started copying it, but this is like four years after this particular, particular print, print was launched, so, and they started copying it, and people are buying. Uh, so why don't you guys copyright your print? <sighs> that, that's a very good question, but that is something that, that's, all these type of questions are the reason why 2016 was a year that I sat back to recalibrate. I wondered. And say, you know what, I need to know where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. uh, this business is not, it's not a hobby. It's, I'm trying to build a heritage brand. Which, is, which takes me to the question I asked you originally. How did you manage to separate Folake from Tiffany Amber? Because Tiffany Amber did all the talking. Folake is a private person. Tiffany Amber is a popular one. She's cool. Do you know a lot of people think you're a snob? Maybe that's why. That's you as a falake. No, I'm not a snob. Yeah. I just think that um, I daydream a lot. And sometimes when you see people, you're so lost in your own world and that you might not acknowledge them as mm -hmm. fast as you should have. Mm -hmm. And um, secondly, sometimes people have a premeditated, premeditated um, opinion. 